All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 528 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about George Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And I told you guys on my YouTube short, if you follow me or subscribe to my YouTube channel, you will see my content on the visual side of things, that I talked about this press conference and said, listening to uh, defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen talk, I think we have something special. But I'm a, I, I wanted to talk about that in this episode. But I want to take it a step further. I want to talk about this entire defensive staff. Who all is going to be here? How do they intertwine with each other? And why I think that this is something really, really special going on here. Now, I said this before that this seems like something special. We don't know what's going to actually happen. We don't know what happens when the product is on the field or the players are on the field. The scheme is, is is put out there and how it works. Does it equate to wins? Does it equate to a top five defense? I don't know. But the the people that are in place, the players that they want to bring and down, uh, on, the, on the team, the cap space that we have, the draft picks that we have, we are setting ourselves up for a run, everybody. I don't know how long that run is going to be or how big that run is going to be. But – I love what Terry Fontenot and Coach Arthur Smith is putting in place because these four guys on the screen that you see, if you're watching this on YouTube and Rumble, this is a really big deal. Probably one of the biggest deals that we've seen in Atlanta Falcons history, and I'm not joking. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple and Google Podcasts. Click that link down in the description if you want to join BetUS. Put down $100. Get a 125% bet book bonus if you want to um, put a wage on the Super Bowl. NBA, MMA. Uh, the MLB is going to be starting soon. College basketball. Anything under the umbrella you can put a wage on. Esports. All that great stuff. Boxing. Find your way and it's there. And it also helps out the show. If you want to support the show monetarily, there's a cash app. VF Baller 20. Also, the PayPal link is down in the description as well. Let, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, these four guys that are on the screen, Ryan Nielsen, Jerry Gray, Dave Huxtable, Frank Bush. If you don't know much about these guys, you're going to get to learn about them. This is our defensive staff. The defensive coordinator is uh, Ryan Nielsen, obviously. You also have uh, Frank Bush, which is our linebackers coach. You also have Dave Huxtable. I don't even, he just got hired not too long ago. He's going to be on the staff, uh, on the defensive staff. I don't know what he's going to be as, as of right now. I'm looking to see. But I know he has ties to uh, Ryan Nielsen. So we'll, we'll get to that and find out what it is as the show go along. And we also have Jerry Gray phenomenal defensive back coach that's been a lot of places has ties to coach uh he has ties to coach uh, Dean Pease and he has ties to coach Arthur Smith so you're going to understand where everybody fits in right now I'm going to give you a little backstory of all four of these guys and I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions of how they all intertwine if you know anything about Ryan Nielsen Ryan Nielsen has been uh in various places you know starting from uh, as a volunteer assistant at USC when he started his coaching career, all the way down to where he's at now at, at with the Atlanta Falcons. Played with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2002, also played with the Los Angeles Avengers. Between the time between USC and where he's at now with the Atlanta Falcons, he's been to Ole Miss, he's been to Central Connecticut, UT Martin, Northern Illinois, NC State. Now think about, now remember that NC State, reference as we continue to talk new orleans saints and the falcons now we're going to crisscross over to dave huxable dave huxable was uh he was the defensive coordinator and linebackers coach at nc state so him and dave huxable worked together at nc state at the time dave huxable was the defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen was the defensive line coach. 
And let me tell you something. Most throughout this entire his entire career, he's been a defensive line coach. So you talk about a team that need pass rush. You got a defensive coordinator that's about that defensive line. We should be able to be good on that uh on, on, on that aspect. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later as well. But now the teacher becomes a student and vice versa in some ways. Because the defensive coordinator is now, you know, uh under the defensive coordinator now. It, it, it's kind of funny how that works out. And I think that's really cool. So when Dave Huxville comes in, they're going to be automatically jailed at the hip, knowing what they expect from each other. He's going to continue to steal. One thing you also have to understand, he's going to continue to still pick uh, Mr. Huxtable's brain as far as learning how to be a defensive coordinator because, you know, he was a defensive coordinator as well. So that works out. Now, Let's stay homegrown for a second. Let's still talk about Frank Bush, linebackers coach for the Atlanta Falcons. Prior to that, he played for the Houston Oilers. As a coach, he started as linebackers coach for the Houston Oilers back in 93. Now you're talking about a guy here to almost have over almost 30 years of coaching experience. In some cases, almost 20, yeah, over 30 years of coaching experience. Went to the Denver Broncos and linebackers coach won a Super Bowl a couple of Super Bowls, I think, with the Denver Broncos as linebackers and secondary special team coach. Arizona Cardinals, Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans, right there, Tennessee Titans. There's right there is a link with Dean Pease. I think Dean Pease, don't, don't quote me on that. I think Dean Pease was there back in 2011. But I know for certain that Coach Arthur Smith was there. I can't remember. But, um... He was linebackers coach then. Went to St. Louis, Louis, Los Angeles Rams, Miami Dolphins, New York Jets. Interim defensive coordinator for the Jets back in 2020. And he jumps over here in 2021 as um, a linebackers coach. Also was a college scout from 87 to 92. Interesting. So, and you look at the linebackers that we've done, that that has been under this system. Since Frank Bush been here, 2021, you know, to up now, you see Detroit Andersons of the world. You see Rashawn Evans. You see Michael Walker. You know, I think Dorian Etheridge was a linebacker at one point. I think he still is. Um, You have some guys that was actually doing pretty good. Some guys are already uh, established at linebacker. Some guys are still learning. I think he did a pretty good job because the linebackers was pretty much one of our strengths on the defense, how everything been going throughout the season. Now, let's flip up to this guy that's in the Packers uniform up here. The Packers attire, I would say, not the uniform. He's not on our team. Jerry Gray, a guy who has a lot of experience, once again, almost 30 years of coaching experience, played in the NFL. From 85 to 93 as, as a Los Angeles Ram, a Houston Oiler, and a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. As a coach, he plays at SMU as defensive backs coach, Tennessee Oilers, defensive quality coach, defensive back coach for the Tennessee Titans. Well, when they changed from the Oilers to the Titans. Buffalo Bills, 2001 to 2005 defensive coordinator, Washington Redskins defensive back coach. You got to understand. Look at all these places he's been when he was with the defensive back coach and defensive coordinator, and look at all the defensive uh, guys that was under him. You know, you look at the Washington Redskins, 2006-2009, they, they had some pretty good defensive backs then. Seattle Seahawks, 2010, that was the Legion of Boom, right? I, I want to say that, close enough that they were just starting out. Tennessee Titans, 2011-2013, there's that connection again with Coach Arthur Smith. Def uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings 2014 to 2019. Green Bay Packers defensive back coach. And 2021, 2022, same position. And you also understand the Green Bay Packers also had some pretty good sec had a pretty good secondary. So when you look at all four of these guys that are linking up to be a cohesive unit as of a defensive staff, we got some, we, we, we got some guys who got some knowledge. 
And I know back in the day we had some guys who did some defensive coordinators that were okay. You know, we had some guys that was all right. I'm not going to, you know, really knock them or whatever. They were all right. They weren't like world beaters or anything, you know. But I think with this group that we have here, this is one of the most special things that is going on in Falcons history. I know we had the Michael Vick experience. We had the Matt Ryan signing. You know, we had the Desmond Trufant situation when he came here, how special he was when he first started. And you can even go back even further when you saw the Ray Buchanan and the, um, Ashley Ambrose. Those two was actually a pretty good duo together. You know, the Andre Risons of the world, you know, Craig Hayward, Keith Brooking. You know, uh, you know, we we had Brady Smith, Brett, um, Brett, I think it's Brady Smith, Brad Smith, whatever the case may be. We had some players that come through. Jesse Tuggle, how can I forget that name? We have some players that came through here, and it was a special time. But it, it one thing I will say, we never had a dynamic like this, in my opinion. I don't think we had a defensive staff that is pretty much uh, established. Guys that we know that we've seen what they've been able to do and have results and put these guys together. If you've seen what Huxtable done in his years back in the day with coaching career when he was at Georgia Tech, you know, uh, building up Keith Brooking, you know, you look at a Frank Bush, what he was doing throughout his time through from the, uh, the times with the Super Bowl teams with the Denver Broncos and the, the things that he's been doing with the Jets and now with the Falcons and you know all those all that talent that he had. Jerry Gray once again, what he's done throughout his time and everybody know that he's really good with defensive backs. You go back to the Minnesota, look at the Captain Munnellins of the world. You look at the uh Darnell Savages with uh the Green Bay Packers. You know, I mean I'm not a really big fan of uh you know, I'm not I'm not really a big fan of what the Buffalo Bills did back in 01 to 05, but there were some things that was there too. I want to say the Tennessee Titans, I'm not sure, from 2011-2013, they had Cortland Finnegan, which was a pretty decent defensive back. So, and, 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 and it all tops off with what we have with Ryan Nielsen. One thing that a lot of people don't talk about about Ryan Nielsen, he knows how to build talent. You see the guys that was with the Saints and the, and the guys that he was able to put together starting off learning how to be a pass rusher and what they were able to do. That front seven for the Saints, and I hate to admit it, but the Saints had a pretty good pass rush. Matt Ryan knows a lot about it. <laughs> he does. I hate to say it, but he does. But, you know, it is it's good to have that situation on our end now where he can build with talent. He's ready to go and he's ready to do some things and to think big and him and coach Arthur Smith are on the same page of what they want. People are using the phrase cut from the same cloth. And I, be I, I, I believe it. I believe that they are. And there's no reason not to. If you listen to what this man, what we were saying and the way he talked in the press conference, there's no reason to think that he's not. I, I really feel that, when you're looking at guys, not only just as a head coach, when you're looking at players that fit your scheme, you want your staff to fit that scheme or at least fit that mindset. When you fit that mindset, it, everybody's on one accord, and this is how you get everybody on the same page to go out there and perform and produce and be productive at the same level, if not better, based on what you're trying to implement on the field. This is why I talk so much about, even with my Georgia Southern Eagles, when I talk about what Coach Clay Helton and Brian Ellis want to do with this offense. We're not running an option anymore. We're running a spread air raid and we're throwing for 4,000 yards and everybody who came from that former offense has to be on board with the new offense. Watch Coach Will Harris. Watch what he does with the players that he's bringing in. How they turn from... Uh, a speed and athletic fast roundabout four three three four where we was moving all over the place to a permanent four two five and watch how he gets those guys in to do things. But it's all about what you implement, what you're able to put together, what you're able to the players who you want to get 
to bring themselves from one, learning what the philosophy of your team is going to be, implementing it through in practice and executing it in the game. This is what it's about. This is the pro right now. You're probably you're, you're you're watching the process of getting the guys together. Watch what they're going to implement when training camp comes. Watch what they implement throughout the time when they're practicing. Watch what they try to execute when they are out there uh, doing the preseason games. The only thing you have to do is get the right pieces. Get the right pieces. Get those guys out there that want to be a part of this. Guys who are physical, fast, tough, nasty. These are the things that they've been saying in the press conference. The guys who like to run the ball and push people over and run people over. Guys who want to stop the run, tackle, and push people around and make sure you get t t um tackles for loss. You know, I couldn't say TFL too fast enough, right? <laughs> But, I mean, that's the thing. You you have to understand, like, this is how it's done. I don't think we as a Falcons, you know, organization, to be honest with you, the fan base never seen anything work like this before. We was always having salary cap problems. We always had problems with getting the right uh, coaches in place. We always had a problem with getting the right uh, players to be on board. And the time that we got the players on board, we got everything done, we had an offensive coordinator that forgot to run the ball. I don't think we're going to have that issue going forward. Maybe we'll go another season of 7 and 10, which I think is unacceptable. Or maybe, we don't know. Maybe we'll go a season that's 10 and 7. Maybe we'll go a season where we're 14 and 3. I don't know, but I'm looking at what this team has and what they put together. There's no doubt in my mind that these guys are trying to win games. You got to respect that. You have to respect that. They're trying to put people in place to win football games, not only with the, the draft that we've done the last two years with Terry Fontenot and Coach Arthur Smith, what they wanted to put together. Now we're going to see some defense of players that's come in with this staff that we have here, and we're going to see how we're going to move in and gel this thing together. What Ryan Nielsen, Dave Hustle, Frank Bush, Jerry Gray, all these guys collectively put their minds and brains together to put out a good product with the right personnel, the right players, the right scheme. I can't wait to see how that happens. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Y'all let me know. And this is where I'm going to leave it, you know. So I, I want y'all guys' feedback. Really let me know. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I am on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. Guys, take heed of what the Falcons are doing. I'm not saying that they're doing anything that's going to be instant, instantaneously have W's on the board. I don't know if we're going to win games, but I, I cannot deny this coaching staff from the offensive side, we kind of see what they were trying to do to the defensive side. And what they put together, I don't know if it's like one of the best defensive uh, staffs in the, in the league. I don't know that. But I will say this is a pretty good staff that we have right here. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get out of here. Click that link down in the description if you want to get on Bet US or if you want to support the show via Cash App and or pod, um, podcast PayPal. My um, PayPal link is down in the description. My Cash App is VFBaller20. I can be found on Twitter as well at VFBaller. That's where I talk about things that don't make it to the show. And uh, hopefully, you guys will enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. I'm going to be in the process of getting ready to um, travel to Atlanta for this week. So we're going to see about how these shows are going to go, but we'll get to that. I'll be keeping you guys posted. All right, y'all. I'm going to get up out of here. Y'all take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace. <laughs>